This episode of Chosen Family is brought to you by 23andMe. Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Oakley and a huge theme of this series to me is all about how queer people have always had to redefine family beyond blood. There are so many kids out there that deserve love and support and homes and while so many queer people are eager to adopt, there are places around the country where they're restricted in doing so. So in today's episode of Chosen Family, we are hearing two stories of queer adoption and I just loved everyone I met in this episode. I think you're gonna love it. I first traveled to Columbus, Ohio to meet Tom and Rick, a gay couple who have adopted two daughters, Amorette and Sophia. Hi, I'm Rick Neal. And, and I'm Tom Grody from Columbus, Ohio. We both went to Miami of Ohio, and we overlapped by two years. Hmm. And we ne but we never had, we didn't meet each other. Okay? Wait, how old were y'all when you met? Uh, I was almost 40. You were 40 and I was 42. We, so we uh, got married and we started trying to adopt. So our kids, so we have two kids. Amorette uh, is nine, and she's named after my grandmother. And uh, Sophia is six, and they are hilarious. They are sassy girls. They are very confident, and they're both doing great. Do they have different names for the two of you? So I'm Poppy. And I'm Daddy. Those are the two names the girls have for us. But, yeah. yeah, that's cute. It works. We don't understand how they teach now. Like, yeah. It's so different. Yeah. Math, so though, third grade math. math. She brings homework home. I have no idea how to do it. No. So I ask her how to do it. She's like, I don't know. <laughs> so then like, you're supposed to know. I think we've been lucky. So our girls started school, their school when they're like three. Mm. And so we have been, you know, their dads and their friends have seen us as they've grown up. So we're pretty lucky that way. But and outside of each of their classroom is a picture of every family. Mm -hmm. And we are the only family that has two same sex parents. I think. One of the things that uh, queer people have to face when they're doing adoption is this whole conversation that we're still having in our society, that can gay people be good parents? I think one of the most insulting things I've heard people say is, oh, it, they just, they want a kid just like a little pet. It's like a little pet. Oh. Like, it's, they don't really, they can't really understand, you know, what about being a parent. They don't really want to raise children because they love those children and they want to see those children. You know, it's, it's like having a little pet. It thing. can feed into a whole lot of misconceptions about gay people, about gay men being predators, about all sorts of you know terrible, terrible misconceptions yeah. and stereotypes yeah. that the only way to get over that is to live our lives. What's your favorite thing about being a dad? Of course I fell in love, right? But having kids is, is, is like a whole other level. Yeah. And you just are like that instinctive parental thing, right? Where you're just like, oh my God, I would jump in front of a bus for my child. I would do it in a second. I wouldn't even think about it, yeah. right? You just have this love for your kids that is just indescribable. Someday, I am going to adopt kids. I've always known this, but I never realized the challenges queer people face while trying to do so. I then traveled to Birmingham, Alabama, where I met up with Leslie and Betsy, a lesbian couple who adopted their son, Nate. I'm Betsy. And I'm Leslie. And that's Nate. Hey, you. <laughs> hey, goofball. <laughs> is this a cow? No, fuck a dog. Is this a chicken? No, fuck a dog. A dog? No, fuck a dog. Oh, a crocodile. For both of us, without even talking about it, adoption was our first choice. And, it, you know, it's not to criticize anybody else's decision. Like, it's, it's, that's such a personal decision. We just thought, you know, I don't know, why, why bring another life into this world when there are so many who, who need a home? And I think we both, it, it, we started talking about that and I was like, oh my God, we both feel that way. So that's when we started the journey, you know, to try to adopt. She had done all this research to find a place where we could adopt together as non-residents, as a same-sex couple. So she found this adoption lawyer in Oklahoma. She happened to have a family that was looking to place a child for adoption and they chose us. Wait, Nate, I have a question. Who's this? Mommy. Who's that? Mama. Who am I? <laughs> Daniel. Everybody loved Nate. I mean, people came to the house for months visiting. Like, whole big deal. People who I never would have thought would have accepted us loved us because of him. Mm. Um, and then Alabama uh, was 
looking to pass that law that would allow faith-based agencies to discriminate against gay and lesbian couples in adoption. By all means, I am not in the business of wanting to change anybody's religious beliefs. You know, that's not my, not my place. I think the issue we had was that we paid taxes, that state money then went to kind of our own discrimination. All of these like hoops that you have to jump through, how does it feel considering you know that, okay, straight couples don't even have to think about this? They, being the state of Alabama, has really set up this very intricate system to try to prevent us from doing this at every turn. And that was humiliating. It made us feel like we were less worthy of being parents. I mean, I think that's why when people know us, their ideas about gay families change because they're like, they're just like our family. They're no different. They're struggling with the same things we are. You know, they got a toddler that's just as big of a handful as ours or more. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, and I think they think, wow, they're good parents. Mama, I want to stay with my family. You want to stay with your family? Yeah. Well, good, because <laughs> we want you to. With so many kids hoping for love, support, and a home, and so many queer people looking to adopt, how can anyone justify denying those families the chance to connect? It's on us to speak out and support local families. It's on us to elect government officials that won't restrict prospective queer parents. And it is on us to create communities that redefine the idea of a traditional definition of family. Thanks so much for watching this video and a special thank you to 23andMe for sponsoring this episode of Chosen Family. For those of you that don't know what 23andMe is, it was created to help people better understand their DNA. When you do it, you'll be able to see which regions around the world your ancestors come from, and you might even learn about how your DNA affects your facial features, your hair, and so much more. And I love 23andMe because they believe that chosen families are just as important and valid as any other families that exist out there. So check out their website, I'll put it right here. I put it in the description below to hear stories about family and adoption at 23andMe.com slash Tyler Oakley. Again, thank you so much for watching this episode of Chosen Family. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment below what you thought, share it on your Twitter, on your Facebook, and get the pin to support HRC. The link is below. Okay, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Later.